you know. I mean, I was not, I was not, I was not circumcised for nothing. I mean, well, you know what else is interesting is that the R and R this week, the major radio trade paper, did a half a page story on my show and on me. Oh yeah. Which I thought was great. Oh. If you can go find a radio station, we'll give you this week's R and R, the April 12th issue. It's on page 55. Well, it really surprised me, and uh, the guy from R&R &R called Kent to get the story. I thought Kent called him. He called Kent. All right. Well, maybe you get some red kids around. Well, well, you know, I hope it makes me a few bucks. You know, I'm tired of being poor. It never hurt. You know, he's working very hard at this. Uh-huh. You know, you got, you got to. You got okay, to. Well, but, easy, guys. Thank Talk you for you calling. Later, Thanks a lot for calling. Yeah. Did you get your album yet? No. Well, you will. I will. Take care. Bye-bye. Uh -huh. <coughs> yeah, he's, he's, now he's one of the cult... Uh-huh. There's a group of people that want 60s radio real badly. And here's another one we're missing. James Brown. Now, he did some emotion in this record. for real. I got the car here with your stuff on it. Oh, great. Well, we'll be able to do that. Right. Like that. Maybe we should do it in like five or six minutes. Bring another couple of two or three records. See, on this show, the only, there's no structure. There's no rules. There's no rules. And it made it easier for me because we were running three minutes of news and these roadblocks are forced and all that clutter is gone. So now we've got more time to do stuff. And normally I'd be running the college musical knowledge trivia tonight, but I eliminated all that so we could really yeah. focus on what we're doing. We've got other radio markets to talk about, for sure. Mm -hmm. We've got lots of things. What else is on the list that we've not talked about? Well, gee, we covered it. Well, we, didn't, we didn't cover Glenn Campbell. And uh, we did cover Glennie. I've got Ronnie. Who is Ronnie? I don't know. I wonder what I want that for. Mm -hmm. Can I try calling Barney again? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Talk about WKR. Oh, good stuff from James Brown. Come to chime time right now, 26 minutes before the hour of one, and it's time now for a spot announcement. Thank you, Spot. Now, what's How about playing something? Uh, did we talk about WKRP? We did. Didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, we did. Have you ever heard beer being brewed before? You can't. What kind of beer? Budweiser, of course. You don't have a jingle for Glen Campbell on there, do you? Of course, there is one. Bad was Joyce's Tom's Rice and Best Barley Malt being blended from their Budweiser. Go on. I got a real good record that Coleman didn't have that they've got now. Billy Joe Royal and I knew you were. No other American brewer does it. Gosmore takes a lot longer, too. That's people say it's a 1964 blood spot. Moving out. That was kind of light and happy, sir. You know what we could do? The cold oh. golden Budweiser being poured right down the middle We could, we could talk about the, uh, the uh, what was spirit it? of Oklahoma and if we talk uh, about that's music. That's the only sad the okay. whole number means all the Budweiser <laughs> gone. You better get another case right away. That Bud, that. Or as you could say to a bartender in court, you've got a case. I'm going to play a jingle now. Thank you. Oh, the Bombsing family. They were ugly, but they were easy. Here's Billy Joe Royal from 1965 on Come in the Middle of a Solid Gold Weekend. This is a good record. They had to play this here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm digging up all the records that we don't have. Are you good? Oh, no, and uh, WKRP was on. You very rarely heard jingles. And I remember one episode where Les Nesman was doing something with his hair. He, he, of course, he had a hair problem. Who did the jingle? Uh, who did the jingles for WKRP? I'm not sure. Drake jingles. Were they Drake jingles? Yeah, it was the Drake logo. Oh. I don't know. I don't really know who it is. 
Well, if an L.A. show, you got to figure the Johnny Man singers, you know. Uh, I got it. I, I don't know who did. Could have been. Did Johnny Man die? Or did no, he's uh, very much alive. It'd be kind of neat on WKRP if they brought in some, you know, big name jocks and let them do something, you know, if, if nothing else, you know, just for the radio exposure. That, um, that show has been out of production so long now, you know. It's coming back on. Oh, it is? Yeah, it's yeah, coming it's back on this fall, isn't it, Rick? Yeah, or okay. this summer or this fall, yeah. Is it, uh, is the two of the originals that are coming back are uh, Le uh, Les Nesman and... Uh, for Richard Sanders and uh, syndication, first time syndication. This thing will be the network. And all the original characters are going to be back for the first five or six episodes. But you know who's going to be playing it, or will it be? Uh, it's going to be at KUT in this market. The channel 43 here. Forty-three. Yes. Which one is Fox in here? Uh, uh, Forty-three. Forty-three. Yeah. Well, Fox. That station has really rose oh, from yeah. well, they're, back when. They've got a lot of money now. You know, it's owned by Heritage. Yes. And Heritage has good stations and a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Well, they, uh, Heritage, didn't do anything with this market because they were supposed to be selling it. Come a chime time. <laughs> 22 minutes before the hour of one. I, I thought maybe I should read to him. No, 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 but I can do this. Thank you. I'm going to read you a message. Listen Monday for details on how you can win your summer vacation on Coma. See what it is. The surprise is you get to hang in the studio with all the disc jockeys. It's your summer vacation station. And now it's a good vacation. And I am ready. I am excited for a kiss. Let's get ready for a kiss. Are we ready? Pucker up, mister. Now! What's the story on that guy who didn't want to get a kiss in the corner over there? Maybe we should play another record. All right, let's go back to the year of 1961 with Dion DiMucci. I would be doing this hondo stuff all night, but we, you know, with everything else, I haven't been able to. We got time to go in. We want to go back. Huh? We want to go back. Yeah. Oh, Dan Ingram, you missed fighting Jack Armstrong, but we've got a lot more to go. More with Bill Meeks and more with some more famous disc jockeys coming up. And it won't spoil your appetite. Here's Ray Conniff. And uh, the singers from 66 on Coma. This is not a research record, but this was a top 10 hit. Yeah. No, I think you're right. And you got to play everything. You know? If you play everything, you don't have to play the shit out of anything. Yeah. And that way the music doesn't get torn down. If you burn out, when you have a situation where you have a finite resource, like oldie for oil, you can't abuse it. You abuse it through history. And this is the single biggest thing that's screwing up all these oldie stations. They just don't know that. Um, your energy level is okay? Yeah. You know, there's a turkey in the fridge. I know. I'm fine. Okay. Not in a foul mood. Where let's see. I guess we can do something now. Well, you want to do the... Uh, yeah. Uh, your, your stuff. Yeah. What other things? Tell me. If you got a question? Will I? Uh, did you do anything with Alan Freed? He was, uh, for our first stories, that he was the first so-called rock and roll disc jockey. Yes. Did you have any doings with him, or did you? Yeah. At Wins and also at WKBW and WHK in Cleveland. I don't remember WHK. Uh, well, I did stuff for WHK, but I don't remember Alan Freed there. But I do remember the Winds in New York, and then later on WKBW. You see, as they portrayed him in the movie American Hot Wax, what was that? Inaccurate, very inaccurate movie. Oh, really? Oh, without a doubt. Um, I don't remember what uh, they it's, said or did with him. 